Let's boldly cover stories as we've never covered them before, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's. Yeah, let's do it. So we're going to do a little bit of lightning round style stories. Okay. But instead of being about lightning, which is interesting in itself, oh. let's talk about planets in our solar system. We're set to launch the MAVEN orbiter to Mars, and that is going to help us figure out, well, we have evidence right now, NASA does, that seems to have showed us that billions of years ago, Mars was not a red and dry and cold planet, but was warm and, forgive me, moist, and was more hospitable to life. And they want to figure out what happened those billions of years ago that would turn it into the arid environment it is now. Now, see, I think this seems like a waste of money because if you've ever seen the documentary Total Recall, you know exactly what happened to all the water on Mars. It's locked in the icy core, and we just need to release it. I was about to fight you <laughs> for saying that uh, space exploration is a waste of money, and now I'm just going to fight you for bringing up Total Recall. <laughs> so that was, I didn't redeem myself? No. no. Well, remember we did that story about the haikus all that time back? Uh huh. This is down their trip now. The winning oh, haikus. good. This is where the haikus went. Yeah. Oh, awesome. That's great. So uh, scientists are again theorizing about Jupiter's big red spot, one of the biggest landmarks in our solar system. And we've been looking at it for hundreds of years. Yeah. Astronomers it's, have. It's uh, it's pretty obvious when you're looking at Jupiter. It's a, I don't know. I wouldn't call it a blemish, but it's certainly uh, pretty recognizable. Just call it the great red spot. The great red spot. The giant pimple. Yes, exactly on right. And uh, so basically, people, scientists are confused as to why it's still there. Like, there's no reason that this swirling storm of gas and vortexes should still be around hundreds of years later. They predicted it would only be decades. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so basically, the, the three prevailing forces are uh, the storm itself swirling around in a circle. Right. Uh, the currents both north and south of it going in uh, opposing directions. Yes, that should have that should have sapped the the turbulence out of that the right. red spot by now, but they, it didn't. They thought it should have slowed it down. Yeah. And the smaller s vortexes around the larger red spot, mm -hmm. which also in theory should have slowed it down. Mm -hmm. um, when doing these calculations. Uh, Scientists have typically ignored the vertical um, forces within the storm itself. Mm -hmm. And now these two scientists, uh, Pedram Hassanzadeh oh and boy. Philip Marcus. Pedram Hassanzadeh. What did I say? Something bad. Something different. Okay, well, <laughs> I'll defer to Kim for that pronunciation. Okay. Uh, professors of fluid dynamics oh, uh, at Harvard and California, Berkeley, respectively, mm -hmm. uh, took a deeper look at these vertical forces within the big red spot uh -huh. and determined that they should not be ignored and that they could be the very reason for uh, the storm's longevity. So although this doesn't exactly solve the mystery, it gets us one step closer to figuring it out why that spot is still there and mm -hmm. what it really means. Well, good. Mystery almost sort almost of solved. Sort of solved. And our last story is in the crown jewel of the solar system, or at least you would guess that from the pictures from the Cassini spacecraft. Uh, it was orbiting around Saturn July, I believe, 13th of this year. And in in the few hours it took, to, uh, well, it's four hour long trip, it took several pictures, one after another, and produced a really beautiful image. That's so resplendent. So they took photos one after another, and it took scientists a few months to mosaic the images together to create one beautiful image, and I will link to its full glory below in the description. It is actually, it's, it's gorgeous, because the way the rings are laid um, at that angle, we shouldn't be able to be able to see them, because it's not, it's not that thick, the, the rings. It's not, it's not on the plane of the rings, it's below, so yeah. we're looking up so at So we're them. looking at it at this angle, and it, it looks like, you know, in our when we're in our elementary school uh, astronomy lesson, what we think Saturn should look like. So it's beautiful. They also took pictures from, from that point of view over at Earth and yeah. the moon. And to see how small we look and how close the moon and the Earth are from that, that uh, perspective, it's, it's very... Very humbling. Yeah, there's a lot of really cool stuff in this super high resolution photo that you should look at. You can see Earth and Venus and Mars. Mm -hmm. um, you can see many of Saturn's moons, one of which... The dark side of Saturn, too. Yes. Yes. You can see, well, uh, part of the dark side of Saturn is illuminated because of light reflected off the rings, so ring light. Mm -hmm. 
um, on the far side of Saturn. It's um, all very incredible stuff. So check that out. And I hope you enjoyed our, our trip across the universe. <laughs>